Right, now just to make sure everything's working, do I get my cute little animations? There we go. Alright. So, welcome back to the Odyssey of the Dragon Lords, everybody. Nice to be your DM again. So, yesterday, um, or last week rather, well, yesterday in the life of the characters at least fought in the great games. You were the winning team, though not no individual won the games themselves. Uh, Xander uh, had got some philosophical discussions up in the academy. Now, um, there are a few things you can consider doing, but feel free to do anything you like, but this is what was discussed last week. Um, there's these mysterious statues appearing, very lifelike statues, and you saw one of them, and it was this person in mid-scream, and the detail was amazing. And I think Xander did some arcana on it and realized it wasn't in fact a statue, it was petrification. And so you, you're to talk to a, a lord um, at the Neuro Dragon Estate. Apparently he's got more information on it. Um, the uh, Velas asks you to investigate the Temple of Lutheria. And... Of course, you have the map that is location of the Ultros, uh, the legendary ship of the Dragon Lords. So, heroes of the prophecy, uh, um, chosen of the Oracle, what would you like to do? Well, I would like to do as Valos asked and investigate Lutheria's temple, but I, I don't know what everybody else wants to do. Uh, that's definitely at the top of our list, I would say. Um, yeah, either the temple or the statues. Mm -hmm. Zagnus is open to either one. Yeah, Bulldog uh, will go where there's food. <laughs> uh, there will be food it's after. that way. Yeah, there will be food after. Uh, I definitely say we investigate the, the temple. Okay. Is is what Taryn will vote? Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Throughout the period of the last however many days we spent competing, would it have been possible for Rainy to finish a potion of healing because she had herbs for one potion of healing? Um, for sure. Yep. So feel free to add a potion of healing to your inventory. No problem. Um, okay, so, well, sounds like the Temple of Lutheria. Now, um, so you're staying at the Great Palace usually, and the easiest way to get to Lutheria, which has a mysterious number 20 painted over the top of it, is just to, whoops, head out this way through the... This whole area here, like, uh, that of Mysterious is numbers 18 to 21 on it, is known as Stygian Row. And this low district is vastly different from the rest of the city. There's clogs, stinking streets, it is filthy, poorly maintained, and ruffians and vagrants shout threatening words as you pass by. And signs of drunkenness, violence, and open debauchery is everywhere. And interesting enough, there's a... Uh, most of the residents here are either tieflings or uh, half orcs. So, a lot like um, Astoria was human dominated, this place here, a lot less so, particularly Stygian Row. And as you pass by this area up here, um, the, the smell. Um, is a bit overpowering. The marketplace is it's filled with bronze cages uh, which are surrounded by a central platform. A rank barnyard odor assaults your senses and over a dozen unwashed minotaurs, minotaurs have been locked within the cages. The minotaurs are physically fit but filthy and many have fresh bruises, bruises and superficial cuts. And as you take this in, I mean the Minotaur slave trade, um, Bullbug would know this better than anybody, is alive and well. 
inside of Mitros. And as you're perhaps wondering what to do about this or just walk away, it's a huge business here. Um, a man comes up to you and says, How did you two get out? How, how did you get out? Come here. And he immediately starts trying to shackle Bulbog. Get back in the pipe cage. How did you get out? Don't. Uh, Bulbog don't, don't know you. Bulbog free. Oh, no such yeah. thing as a free minotaur. Come here. Taryn's going to put her hand on Whoa. the guy's chest and push him backwards. Well, let's. Um, he's going to try and put it on. I'm going to give Taryn advantage on this. Um, he's just. Uh, he's going to roll a 12. So athletics check, try and beat a 12. Yeah. So you push him away and he, he recalls back. Look, this is a slave market. We sell slaves here. This one here is filthy. I don't know about you. And he shoots sidelong glances at Zagnus, who is a minotaur as well, but let's just say more finely dressed than Bulbo. I don't know about you, but I know a slave when I see one. Get back in the pens. And Bulbo. You seem to do not. Gladiator, Bulbo, not slave. You tried once to get him in a pen and failed miserably. What do you think is going to happen if you try again? Come on, man. Look, I don't know who you are, but this creature here is somebody's property. Laws are laws. We get to take him back and sort this out. Uh, no, we're not, though. Um, and Taryn's going to walk over to the pen and try to open it and let all of the slaves out. Ah, uh, no, no. Immediately, um, uh... A dozen or so people block your way. No, no, miss. No, no, miss. I'm going to approach this first guy, and I'm yep. going to gently place the back of my hand against his cheek like this, and just ask him, do you feel so strongly that this Minotaur is property that you would die for it today? Look, we got laws here, mate. If you cut me down here, you'll be up for murder. But you can make an athletics check if you like. Uh, sorry, an intimidation check, Zagnus. Okay. And Timmy and Timmy and Timmy. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Again. Um, I think you've got your roles to GM only, but I do see yeah. it as GM. Yeah. Sure okay. I'll change that. Um Yeah, yeah I'm gonna use my channel divinity, um Dragon's Wrath. I pasted it in there. Okay. So on all, it says uh, each creature of my choice within 60 feet. So I'm going to do, you said about a dozen. So I'll do all of them plus the uh, the main guy. So 13 of them. Okay. So have fun with 13 wisdom saving throws. You're welcome. Uh, that's <laughs> fine. Uh, more <laughs> difficult if I was actually rolling dice. Um, okay, the main guy. We'll do the main guy first. And hello, Xander. Hello. Okay. Yeah. By the way, but while this all happening, I'll do cast prejudication on that guy to make him smell awful, like <laughs> he did not wash himself for quite a while. All right. <coughs> so the DC on this is fourteen. It's fifteen. It's actually fifteen right now. It doesn't update because I had to do that myself. Okay, fifteen. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll update that now that I've leveled up. Okay, wisdom saving throw for the main guy. Oh dear, ten. And his friends who are what are those type of creatures? Okay, twelve of these guys. All right. Uh, one. Whoops, that's intelligence. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The cap, as, uh, as Xander's, uh, not Xander, Zagnus has got his hand on his shoulder. And then, what is, what is it? And I'm not asking you to make you the sound for us, because nobody likes making these type <laughs> of sounds. But what, what is, what is, how does Taryn present when she's making her... Frightful prison. How does it? Uh, she's definitely uh, like floating a little bit off the ground because she's al almost always flying at least a little. But her wings are spread out, and she just uh sounds like 
an adult dragon uh, scaring the piss out of people. Okay. So the uh, you, you feel as Taran lets out this horrifically loud roar. You feel the shake of the captain under his uh, um, under your hand. And it says, oh, uh, you, you, you don't scare me. Um, I got, got, got my man here. They'll, they'll, they'll protect me. Right, guys? And he looks around and all but three of them have fled. They just hear this roar and think, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, this is too much. And, and then he looks up, because he's shorter than Zagnus, and he looks up at Zagnus. Um, look, just a misunderstanding. Um, I'll just put these shackles aside. Um, we'll just walk away, right? And, no and harm, the shackles no over. No, no, no. A oh, wise choice. the shackles. And the shackles I, over. Uh, um, make an intimidation. He's going to roll for it at disadvantage, because he's, he's scared. Scared of me. <laughs> Oh, well, well, I think that'll yeah, do there it. You go. What did you roll? That 20. Can't beat that. Can't beat that. Uh, uh, sure, the, the, it's cost five gold pieces. So I'll need them back. Uh, I'm going to shackle him to the pin. Uh, okay. And I'm going to let the Minotaurs out. Let the Minotaurs out. Okay. Um, so. Um, see how many they are. At this point, I just I just want to see where this goes. I mean, I've already scared the shit out of, <laughs> like, way too many people. Twelve people. <laughs> but there's about two dozen. Um, two dozen... Uh, minotaurs here and you go around imagine some uh, not just Taryn is unlocking it be going click 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 and unlock it immediately about half of them uh, take off just go running through the city um, causing chaos as they go knocking down carts uh, people are saying who let the animals out and some of them are cheering as well um, I'll say even without a history check, probably, well, Bullbug and Zagnus would perhaps know this better than anyone, then um, a, lot of, a lot of people see Minotaurs as slaves, and a lot of them see them more people? I'm not sure people is the right word, but you know what I mean, like an actual fully conscious beings. And some of the slaves are actually bred as slaves. So as you open the caves, about half of the, the, the Minotaurs are... <laughs> I come running through it, and the other 12 remain in their open cages. You can't do that! That's somebody's property! What are you doing? Uh, you don't have to be anybody's property anymore, so... I own that one! This is a, a random person who has to have that the market. Uh, it's mine, and you let this him out! He's my property! Get him back! Uh, sucks to suck. You don't have that property anymore, I guess. Sucks to suck. <laughs> look, look at them all. Bullbug thinks it looks like bulls in a china shop. Ha ha ha. What's china? Guards! Guards! And, um, the guards here, uh, who approach anyway, are very obviously cultists of Sidon. Uh, and they say, well, oh, you just can't do that. This is a regulated market. I'm going to be talking to Queen Valis and King Akistus about that, and there will be consequences. Sounds good. Uh, let me know what Queen Valis has to say. <clears throat> and they go charging after and trying to round up these bull, uh, these minotaurs. Um, the only uh, uh, cultists of Sidon are chasing them around. Everybody else, half of them are cheering, half of them are trying to get their property back. But there's still 12 minotaurs in there, sitting in open cages. They could run if they want, but they're not running. Does Bullbug want to try to talk to his compatriots? Bullbug don't really know them. Bullbug sold into slavery after family was killed. But Bullbug, good gladiator. Zagnus will tell Bullbug 
um, you won your freedom not just by strength of body, but strength of will. If they lack that strength, then slaves they will remain. It is for them to decide. The way is open. They will leave if they wish. While the group is talking to each other, Rainy's gonna go up to, like, I guess the closest one that's still in the pen and mm -hmm. just be like, I know this is all you know, and I know that new can be scary, but you're free to have your own decisions and make your own choices. And I know that's overwhelming now, but in the end, it's worth it. Um, and this minotaur you're talking to, Rainy, is a once again fine specimen of a minotaur, probably being used in the gladi gladiator pits, or even as a beast of burden. You see a lot of minotaurs are working in fields and doing heavy labor and stuff like that. Um, this one, though, is covered in minor scrapes and bruises, suggesting maybe he's been in fights recently. And he looks at you, Rainy, and says, I, I, I was born into this. This is, this is all I know. This is my life. Um, it's not such a bad life. I'll, I'll just stay here. It's, it's okay. Well, if you're sure, and then I look up to the rest of them, I say, you know, just because he wants to stay doesn't mean that you have to. It's your choice. You get to make a choice. If, if I did leave, Miss, what would I do? Well, you could work at, if you still wanted to fight, you could still work or fight for money for your own pleasure, but then you could also do whatever you wanted, honestly. You make it sound yeah. easy. I have no money, no options. Mm -hmm. You'll, you'll um, fight I... like a bull bug. You'll fight with heroes. Uh, I... We all have to start the war. Army of Minotaurs. <laughs> I'll make a persuasion check, Rainy. You raise some good points. Okay. Middling. Oh, oh, maybe you could give me a couple of copper pieces. I could try starting new life. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Anybody that wants to leave and start their new life, I will uh, give them a gold piece. Um, okay. Is anybody else, while Rainy's talking to us, is anybody else talking to Minotaurs or just leaving them as is? What's the rest of you doing? Uh, any of them that go to leave, I'll address them as they leave. Uh, and just tell them, um, uh, brothers... They will come for you. They believe they own you. Um, when they come, remember that their coin and their words on paper are not stronger than the corded muscle of your arm. Remember that if you want this, you will need to fight for it. Look at this inspiring speech as, uh, well, we'll see how many towards lead, but it's at least one. They put the hand on the shoulder, goes and says, you're a brother of Minotaur. I've heard of the mighty deeds you have done already. You are an inspiration to us all. Zadis just nods in the general direction. Hey, okay. uh, Rainy, make it make eleven more persuasion checks. All righty, well done. DC's fifteen, just so you know. Okie dokie, that will be helpful. Nice. Wow. Let's go. Nice. Wow. Oh, I may okay. roll that one. I have an ability. Uh, I'm actually going to spend a sorcery point oh, to wow. re-roll an ability check. All right, we're okay. at four. So this is number five. Four. Five for five. Six. Nice. So many 21s. Oh, I will do it again because I want to go. Yes. So you're at six. Maybe seven. Seven. Eight. Eight. Nine. Wow. 
Oh, I'll do it again. I got more sorcery points. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. Oh my god. Two more. One more. But the front door. I'll reroll that one too. Hey. I got lots of sorcery points, guys. It's fine. Uh, uh, All of them. No, that rules. All of them. That's a new 8th level ability, by the way. I can spend sorcery points to reroll ability checks. Yeah, that, that was, rules. That's amazing. Um, I would point out it will cost you 12 gold pieces, though. Yes, I, I, I am aware. Okay. Pull that. I'll, I'll uh, hand her six. So. Okay, so six Do from Rainy, six from Taryn. Yep. And wow, so um, a lot of these are ones who were persuaded um, they, they take heart from the, um, the words of Zagnus as they leave. Um, you guys are definitely getting a bit of a reputation. Um, people are starting to, to follow you. As, as, as you remember, when you started wandering around this uh, tavern, there was lots of praise. Um, <laughs> who was it? Xander's due to get married tomorrow, I think? Oh, uh, yeah, uh-huh. Nope, 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 nope. No. I forgot about that. I should have learned ceremony. Ah, oh, yes. I can prepare it. You making me <laughs> to take one Just level saying. spell that I didn't want to take, but I'll take it then now. <laughs> <laughs> Which calls disguise your uh, myself. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, where is it? Uh, disguise self. Learn. Did okay. you ever <laughs> disguise <talk> self <laughs> to avoid a marriage? <laughs> okay. Did you ever copy that spell that Rainy gave you? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if you ever did that. So you're disguising no, you, yourself, you. Xander? Uh, yeah, well, I guess while walking throughout the city. Who look like? I just... Still human, just looking uh, not myself. Like I'll add same. big nose. <laughs> so Long a nose. Nondescript non um, commoner. Yeah, a, a mustache, you know, nose and mustache. Just think of those uh, glasses with a mustache type of thing, <laughs> but instead of big Beautiful. nose. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay, so you continue your way through Stygian Row. Hmm. As I said, it's it's not the nicest place in the world. Um, but as you head down here to the district, um. A, what is it? A, um, uh, a, a, a man who is standing outside this place here called the Seder's Tale. Um, he himself is a human. This is, oh my goodness, it's the heroes of the games. I must say, you guys were, were spectacular. I mean, you didn't win the whole thing, but as a group, I think you guys are unstoppable. Congratulations on your win. Thank you. Opa, got two shinies. <laughs> got two shiny. Got two shiners. Oh, well, that's that's great. The cost of doing battle and all that. Now, no, I... two shinies. Two medals. And um, I'm, I'm so excited. Look, there are lots of places to drink around this town. But um, <gasps> if you only drink at the Seder's Tale, um, I'll give you like... Ooh, let's think of this as a, as a sponsorship. Uh, free wine for life. And I'll pay oh. you a thousand gold pieces. But only if you just go to my one establishment. A thousand gold Bro. pieces. Brother, yeah, okay. bullbug like drink, yeah. bullbug like Sold. drink. Wait, maybe somebody else will offer us more. Oh, no, it's a thousand gold pieces. That's very generous. Free and, wine uh, for life. Free <laughs> wine for life. Bullbug want drink, bullbug. All right, fine. Well, mm, I'm good with it. so fast, Julius. You think you could sink... Um, What's the expression? Malcolm's blanking when you under the nose or something when you slip something under the radar. Under the radar. Under the radar? We'll yeah. go under the radar, even though nobody knows what radar is in this world. 
You think you could sneak one like this under the radar? Under the alarm spell. Under the oh, alarm oh. spell. Very good. When I have, shall we say, something more delectable to offer you for your sponsorship. And let me just say, as an honest member of the city, the city, and she's a female dressed in long, elegant robes that perhaps reveal a little too much. She says, you really don't want to be associating with Julius here. He's, shall we say, got not the nicest reputation. I would suggest you throw your sponsorship dollars behind me. And my name is Ambrosia, by the way. I come from the Siren's Roost. Shall we say it's a house of pleasure? If you throw your endorsement behind me, I could pay you 1,500 gold pieces. And do not think it is just a simple brothel. We are well respected, well liked. We are a very upmarket establishment. And unlike dirty little Julius here, we have quite the reputation. What do you say? Zagnus says, um, <coughs> what's a brothel? <laughs> Can I inside check the both of them? Amazing. Sure. So first of all, do the insight check for Julius, and then an insight check for Ambrosia. Uh, Julius, um, he does appear a little bit disheveled. Um, I mean, as I said, Stygian Row is a little bit of a, you know, uh, more like a, a slum area. Um, he seems genuine in his offer to um, pay you the thousand gold pieces and free wine. It seems genuine. Have to get and read an Ambrosia. And when you ask this question, Ambrosia says, Well, darling, let's just say all sorts of pleasures can be bought for money. Some of the, hmm, how shall I put that, are pleasures of the flesh. And we offer a wide variety of services for all manners of, shall we say, kinks? Shall we say, experimental or just plain old normal pleasures of the flesh for 1500 gold pieces think of what the good you could accomplish with this you don't trust her she she's a peddler of flesh much better free wine never go wrong with that so i'm gonna ask i don't want to say automatically that zackness doesn't get it can i roll like an intelligence check to see if i pick up what a pleasure of the flesh means Sure. I'm sure he's, he's, from the, he's from the wilderness. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't sure. know the concept of of paying for this service. Okay. Sure. Intelligence check. Oh no, he gets it. Okay. Oh no, he gets it. <laughs> <laughs> what he's perplexed by the idea of that, but he's uh, he's gonna think about it. He's not as interested in that as he is wine. So what do you say? 1,500 gold pieces? It's a lot more than a 1,000. Yeah, that free wine sounds really nice, though. The extra 500 doesn't make up for a lifetime of wine. Yeah, can you also give us a lifetime of wine? Oh, we have wine at our establishment. Um, to show that I'm negotiating in good faith, it... It is not as plentiful as it is here in the, the satyr's tale. But we do have wine available. Hmm. Come on, guys. Like free wine, wine. Free beer. Yeah. What's there not to like? I mean, this guy seems more fun. Yeah, I agree. Fun. I don't know what your idea of fun is. Hey, fun is my speciality, darling. I, I see. What does I, everybody think? Because so far, I think we've got like three opinions. For, for... Uh, Rainy doesn't really have an opinion on this. Um, I do have a question though. Was there money handed out like a session or two ago? Because, uh, yeah, I'm just curious. I know we had a lot 
Yes. Yes. Um, there's just some medals that got sold. No, we split like the no, party I'm not gold talking before about that. Last session. Yeah, 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 we split yeah, the Max party split money. It. Um, just scroll up and find it. Yeah, yeah it's gonna trying, but it's, it's disappeared. So. Try to look it up. Yeah, but, but okay, uh, that was it. But yeah, Rainy doesn't really. She's just gonna go along with whatever the group wants for this drinking. I'll uh, I'll ask Ambrosia. Uh, yes, if we I'm pick good. Julius, can we still visit your establishment? Of course, there's costs associated with visits. Of course, you can. You'd be most welcome. All right, cool. I'm gonna go with free wine. I'm sorry about about <clears> that. <laughs> Bullbug heard free wine, and he. Well, like I'll see you later. One final offer. I mean, a wine here. How much is your wines, dear Julius? And he says, "Oh, uh, a usual one is about uh Five silver pieces for the top of the line stuff. I am prepared to offer you three thousand gold pieces to put your to sponsor, shall we say, the Zywin's Roost. And by my calculation, that's six thousand glasses of wine. Three thousand gold pieces. A small fortune for the heroes of the oracles, the champions of the games. To endorse my establishment. Do we know by any chance how that establishments are perceived by people overall in the city? It's what I'm trying to maybe. Yeah, I, I, fine. yeah <clears throat> I, I, I think that would be an accurate uh, statement. Yeah. Ancient Greece. I mean, I know they're. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're less frowned upon in this world than perhaps they are in our world. And, um, we'll give you this one for free. The, the Siren's Roost is very upmarket, very lavish silks, you know, courtesans of all descriptions. Uh, so very upmarket. Okay. 3,000 gold pieces. 6,000 mm. glasses of wine. I'm going to ask her, what happens to the calves? The calves? Well, I, I, do you you, mean you the say you sell, you sell breeding for fun. What happens to the calves? <laughs> you, you beat me. <laughs> I thought we just found yeah. it. Well, the, the calves, the children, our baby, we in fact have a small little daycare. We want a school was inside there as well. Um... Shall we say, with various magical elixirs and potions we have, it doesn't happen that often. Uh, but it does happen, but they're well taken care of. Uh, well, if we'd also be funding a school. Yes. Look, she's twisting your words. Yes, they have a school. Yes, they have a daycare. But come on, she's still... Look, okay, look, come with me. I... Ah. Look, you don't no, want to... I'm gonna go with the pretty siren lady. She's got wings. I'm yeah, gonna... I'll, uh, I would prefer that as well. I, I mean, that's three thousand glasses of wine. That's, I mean, they, that's plenty. All right, all right, all right. Two thousand gold pieces. I'll double my offer. Oh, that's still less than me, darling. Are you gonna be cheap your whole life? You, you shut your mouth. Just think, we take money now, and because we're not gonna be in the city all the time. I mean, it's nice to have. I'll, uh, free wine here, but if we go to other city, we can spend this money on drinks in other city as well. Oh, spend the I money think. however you like, darling. Just to be clear, yeah. though, you need to visit my establishment. You need to be visible for the better part of a day. And if people ask you about it, you only say good things. Which is fine, because there are only good things to say. So true. I mean, this is a sponsorship. Um, We're going to make another... You know, no doubt do some sirens, you know, uh, sirens roost, uh, favorite uh, meeting place for the heroes of the prophecy. I also will whisper to our team, so only our mm -hmm. team hears. Plus, th this place where she um, seems more upscale, so her workers probably will know a lot of rumors. So we could learn maybe uh, about the king things there. 
which probably could be for our benefit because I don't really like the dragons that he has there. There's something fishy about it. So yeah, I agree. We could probably find out more about uh, this temple as well. Yeah. Yeah, if, if if supporting this place's business may, means that a school is more well run and well funded, then I'm I'm down for that. Bullbuck, I'll get you a big bottle of strong drinks, not just wine. No, oh, Bullbuck daydreaming about wine. You buy Bullbug wine? Sorry. Yes. Sure. Oh, wine for Bullbug. <laughs> okay. Right. I think somebody just needs to make a choice, and it's not going to be me. So. Let's go with the, uh, uh, what's her name? Ambrosia. Ambrosia. Wow. Fitting name. I just settled then. And she holds out an arm <clears throat> for Zagnus to grab hold of, and she holds out an arm for Rainy to grab hold of. So why am I grabbing hold of? She's offering your arm. She wants to be escorted through the city. She wants to be seen with the heroes of the Oracle on her arm. You're not comfortable oh, well, holding no, my arm? I, I, I mean, I literally asked, what, why me? Why me? Because you're gorgeous, darling. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask why right now. We kind of had somewhere to be. Well, we well we're strolling to... in that direction anyways. We might as well just make it part of the thing. True. Oh, my... is it in the same direction? Okay, then fine, sure. Well, my establishment is over here. And this is the Temple of Lutheria. So it is literally on your way. Okay. Yeah, fine. So you make I'll your take way the through arm. the city here with Zagnus and Rainy on each arm. And she takes an inordinately long amount of time. She waves to people. She stops for chats. And she says, oh, these are my new friends. And she introduces you. And she's making a big show of it. And quite frankly, this is what she paid her money for. Um, are you happy to play along and greet people that she introduces to you? Um, impatiently. As long as they're not rude. Well, they're, they're gushing. They're not rude. They're, 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 the only thing they're rude about is being too lavish in their praise. Um, That's clear. So Zach was <laughs> a bit, bit reluctant. Um, how, how, is, how is Magdalena re re reacting to all of this? Uh, slow walk. Just keeping a low profile. Yeah, kind of hard. You do your best as you can, but um, as soon as um, you b b grow out of sight and bows, oh, and there's over there. You'll see there's Magdalena, and she can she can saw all sorts of uh, shall we say diseases. She'll be quite an asset. <laughs> Xander, in due time. That's foul, Malcolm. <laughs> Xander That's does not look like himself. <laughs> Oh, Xander does not look rock? like himself. Um, okay, so Xander can be relatively anonymous. Uh, Rainy, yep. on, on one of her arms, what do you say? Or do? Oh, I just I just smile politely at everyone and it, uh, that, like, says hi. And uh, it starts genuine, but then she starts to get a little annoyed by the gushing. Mm. So it starts yeah. to become strained. But she's just like, whatever. And Zegnus? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, people praise me, I'll, I'll nod, yes, thank you, uh, but I'll, it'll be evident that I'm impatient with the frequent stops, because, as I said earlier, we had a place to be. Okay, Taryn? Oh, she's living it up. <laughs> living it up, living her best life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she's, like, using her siren wiles to make the crowd go crazy. Awesome, and, and they do go crazy. And Bobok, everybody's completely ignoring you. You hear comments like, oh my god, did you hear about everybody that left the, the slave pens? Honestly, they just let their cattle roam free. You are not caught up in this praise, Bobok. What do you do? <laughs> Bobok, happy for heroes. Yay! Bobok's friends. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me just look up something <clears throat> quickly. Uh, 
Okay, eventually you make your way to the infamous Sirens Root with a strange number 19 hovering over its head. Um, Ambrosia um, immediately in in instructs some of the maintenance people to start changing the sign to Sirens Room, favorite place of the Heroes of Oracle. So that sign is already going up. And she brings you inside. There's a nice general hubbub inside. People are going. And she, she, there's some influential people here. There's some common folk here, but she makes it a big show of showing everybody. Now, this is always a tricky part for me. So we're just going to not really play this out. But there are services available. Um, if you wish to partake in one, then all we'll do is say that you partake in one. Um, Oh, damn it. I shouldn't have put that truth thing in there. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh, error from DM. Abort, abort. Okay. Uh, let me try that again. So those are the services that are on offer. If you wish to converse with them, if you wish to partake of the services, just let me know and we'll just take it as done. But we won't actually go into, shall we say, the, the details. So this, she offered, th this is free by the way. Your first one at least is free. Does anybody wish to partake in one of them? Nope. nope. Are the services listed? Okay. Oh, sorry, and um, it's people. Uh, people, yeah, people. This is I, I listed the, the options in um, Discord. These are the pleasures of the flesh that he was talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Rainy doesn't know much about pleasures of the flesh, but she is going to be real distracted by Eosia. Yosia looks very similar mm -hmm. to her. It's very distracting. Probably the first time she's ever seen. Oh yes, and Yosia is uh, no doubt. You know, they're, they're, they're all stunningly beautiful. Uh, the men and the women, all stunningly beautiful. But sure, you can uh, admire her. Yeah, I'll go hang life. out with Callie. Okay. Callistor. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna call him Callie. Yeah, son of Pythor. Mm -hmm. I will escort the son of Pythor. Oh shit, both is, of us? Is Bullbug supposed to perform here? No, bud. Bullbug, here's but a you drink. Can go over there and get a drink. Oh, yeah. drink yeah. for a Bullbug. Glug, 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 glug. More. Yeah, okay, good. I'll get him a whole bottle. Like I promised. How much? Oh, barrel. Oh, it's free. Or barrel. There you go. <laughs> oh, yay, barrel. How much would be a barrel? Ah, <laughs> oh, I mean, fifty gold pieces. And the barkeeper uh. says, "No, no, you, you can't do that. No, no, no." And then Borja says, "No, no, no, no. These are our guests. I don't know who this Billbug fellow is. I don't know about him, but any friends of the heroes of the Oracle are friends of mine. So you let him drink as much as he likes." And the barkeep nods. And oh, as much as Bullbug like. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine someone the size of Bullbug could, uh, uh, um, <laughs> couple <of> kegs. <laughs> drink the place uh, drink the place dry. So okay. just for um, trekking, uh, was a drink on the house or do I pay fifty gold? Uh, drinks on the house. Okay. All right. You pay 3,000 gold pieces to get your approval. So 50 gold pieces is not really that much by comparison. Okay. Um, Was that 3,000 a piece for each of us? No, no, no. Oh, no. I to say, that'd be a lot. No. Okay. Did we get handed that one? Yeah, I already put it in the chat. No, I just didn't know if we actually got handed it. I know you did the math. I didn't know if we got handed it. We'll say when you get to the establishment, she takes you out back and carefully counts out 3,000 gold pieces and pushes the big pile towards you. Would you like that in platinum, electrum, gold, silver, or copper? And please don't say copper. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wheelbarrow. It'll be lighter that way. 
platinum. Yeah, we'll I was about to platinum. say copper, but I guess I'll we'll just take you know whatever is convenient. Oh, platinum. I'll take platinum. Platinum. Yeah. So that's what uh, three hundred platinum pieces. And are you partaking in Kalistor's services, Taryn and um, Zekus? Well, talking? she doesn't know what services are, but she's going to start talking with you, Zia. Okay. Um, so we'll start with uh, um, Rainy talking to Yosia, and she says, Oh, hello. It's a pleasure to see another, another cr fey like creature. Would you perhaps like to come up to my room and we could discuss it further? Wait, what happens in your room? I, no, well, I just, I've never met another one like me. Very Look, we can do whatever weird. you like in my room. We can just talk. We can exchange tales of what it's like living the lives that we lead. Would you like that? Maybe. Is this just money. I'm still new. I don't know how this works. Uh, to you, sweetheart. No charge. Oh. Well, now you sure. Let's just go talk. I'd love to learn about your life. Takes you up to a very beautiful room, and you just talk. And, um, exchange tales, and what it's like, and she says, like, um, it's, she makes a good living here. She uses it to help her family. Um, yeah. She has nothing but positive things to say about the Siren's Roof and her life here. Taryn, Zagnus, want to talk to Killistor? Uh, yes. I will buy him a round of drinks along with myself to talk with a, a fellow son of Pythor. Oh, you're, you're a son of Pythor too? Yes, spiritually, not physically. Oh, well, let's just say, um... <laughs> Good old Pythor, he has uh, quite the extensive collection of children. I am just but one of many, but I do have the blood of Pythor flowing within my um, within my veins. Let me just say that uh, many, a uh, few years back, he, he visited my mother and um, I am, I as his son, I uh, was raised here, um, had a good education, I, I know how to read, I know how to write. Let's just say I'm paying it forward by doing my time here. And do you know how to fight? I know how to wrestle. <laughs> A good sport. Noble. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the best day of my life. No. No, um. You're the hero. Oh, it's very obvious. You're the heroes of the Oracle, are you not? So we are told. Now, mm, let's just say I spend half of my time uh, here giving the uh, giving people a, a pleasurable time. Mm, I mean, where do you stand on this whole Lutheria side on five god situation? Uh, Lutheria and Sidon will die in due time. Mm. Ah, that is what I like to hear. Now, man, no friend of Lutheria. I am no friend of Lutheria. And I've heard some rather unpleasant rumors about them. I have heard... He looks around and tries to say this as quietly as possible. But I believe They've got children hidden in the basement. And if I know anything about the cultists of Lotheria, those children will be sacrificed to Lotheria. Um, I've tried to go there myself, trying to undermine the cult as best I can, but there's only so much one person can do. And where is this basement? It's in the basement of, temp of the Temple of Lutheria. Oh, in the Temple. Know, so I know. Yeah, the basement of the Temple. Okay. Now, I, have, uh, I have no reward to offer, but if the rumors are true, then surely these children need to be, need to be saved. I'm going to grab him by the shoulders and say any son of Pythor should know. 
the blood of your enemies is its own reward. <laughs> you get more inspiring by the second, my friend. Thank you. Now, I feel it would be rude for me not to offer, but would you like to visit me in my room? What's in your room? Oh, me? You rolled high enough. You know what it is. <laughs> not from him. <laughs> uh, but if you want to step in, if Taryn wants to say you'll go to his room, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, we'll go. We can go to your room. Uh, All right. So you I wish to... you luck in the wrestling match. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, 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 I'll leave this to um to your own imagination about what happens up in there. As I said, I don't want to get into any type of uh, details, but uh, have you imagined that happening? Is what's happening? Um, uh, Magdalena, what what are you doing? <coughs> Uh, Max is just going to grab a sandwich and go try to find a spot outside away from any people and just eat in peace sure. and uh, get away from everyone just Xander? for like five minutes. Sure. Xander? Xander enjoying the view of uh, Bulbuck drinking the whole barrel of wine. <laughs> He's still under... If hour has not passed, I'm still under the illusion spell disguise myself, so... Okay. Still hiding from that lady. <laughs> no, you're staying pure for her. <laughs> staying pure for your wife to be. And we all know what Bullbug is doing. So, Bullbug, make me a constitution saving throw at advantage. Ha <laughs> ha. Bullbug's good at these. Ah, oh, you take it like a champ. Okay, everybody oh. except Xander. Oh, sorry, except uh, Bullbug. Can you <laughs> roll me a. What is it? A d12. Everybody apart from Bullbug, guys... roll me a d12. While you're doing that, Bullbug would slam it down like he chugged the whole thing and just Bullbug in a huge burp that kind of rumbles loose glasses on the bar. Okay, so these are for random rumors that you're overhearing as you're in this place. Um, Taryn, you hear a strange rumor that King Pythor, the god of battle, has abdicated his throne. And no one knows where he's gone. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, Rainy, you're over here. Um, you, ho ho you hear a rumor that the Order of Sidon is growing far too powerful. And they seemingly have unlimited wealth to spend. Um, some think their wealth comes from the Lost Gigan Ruins on the island of Yonder. Now people know about the island of Yonder, but... No idea where it is, but that's where they say the wealth is coming from. Xander, Eco, and Oriad is calling for war with Aresia again. After 500 years, she's still trying to get her betrothed back, and she would really give it a, t a rest. Sorry, uh, calling for a war again. <laughs> yeah, so her betrothed has been taken by the people in Aresia, which is a city you haven't come across yet. And she basically wants to break down the walls to get her her, her lover back. Um, thing with Aresia, there's, there's a walled city and the walls have never fell. And they never even fell during the Great War. And finally, um, I don't know. Uh, roll again, uh, Zagnus. That is an hey. uninteresting rumor. It says the great games are about to start, so it doesn't make sense. Again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, we've had a nine, haven't we? Yeah, roll again. Stop rolling silly things, Agnes. What do you yeah. Nine? Sorry. Seven? We've had a seven? Oh, come on, man. Again. Four. There we go. We've had yeah. a four. Oh, we've had a four. What was God, the damn eleven? It. What uh, was the eleven? Did we have I'm going to stop. Did I miss? Yeah, Thanks. I rolled. I, Meg's rolled an eleven. That's okay. another two. Two? Okay, we'll, we'll get to one. your 11 in a second. We just want Zagnus to roll something interesting. Keep going, sunshine. Three. Three. Okay, so 11. <laughs> um, the rumor is something has disturbed Kentamane. 
the Titan's great arms are on the move. Um, and many have seen it. Do you guys remember who Kentamane is? Yeah, yeah we the... came across the arms at some point. Yeah, on the way did. to the necropolis, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, they were not moving. Um, but just to remind you, this is what Hintermain looks like. And apart from that the big creature in the back, this no is No problem you, at all. This is what Won't you saw an issue. on the way to somewhere. They weren't moving, but the rumors are they're, they're moving. Um, and finally, Zagnus, you hear Gaius. You've come across Gaius before. Um, he sent centaurs after you. He um, he negotiated for the terms of the storm ending. Um, no, I remember. Yeah. And the rumor is that Gaius, the leader of the Order of Sidon, has now more influence over King Akatus than the goddess Velis. I'm wondering how could things come to be? Gallus is the goddess of wisdom. Uh, People have, you know, written many, many poems and songs about just how beautiful he is. She's universally liked and loved, unlike her husband. So how has the Court of Sidon turned the, you know, uh, they're getting more and more influence over the King Akatus. So that's what you hear. Um, people visiting soon come back. Perhaps with a smile on their face, perhaps not. And we'll say this has taken uh, most of the day. Ambrosia is definitely showing off. Um, and I think it's time for us to move on. Mm -hmm. Guys, moving on? Yeah. You guys all washed your hands, right? A, a high class place. It's clean. You didn't answer my question. Yes. <laughs> did you? Well, I mean, I just did this and she showed forever useful press the digitation that she uses all the time. I'd still prefer some sanitizer, though, at least. What sanitizer? You're an alchemist. Well, yeah, but I make things that go boom. Or like healing stuff, and that's like herbalism kit. I, I don't I don't I don't know alchemy. It might be I an ingredient. I don't know. It's it's out there somewhere. But I just cleaned my hands. See? And she does it again. She's like, I can clean you too, and then she cleans you top to bottom. I washed my hands. Oh, well now you're cleaner. I think we've hopefully you all learned good hand washing habits after uh, the world went to crazy, you know, not, you know, fairly recent past. Anyway, you leave the temple, uh, the uh, the sirens roost, and um, yeah, and you head towards the temple of Lutheria <laughs> as Zagnus goes to wash his hands. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll yeah, see. I don't give a shit. <laughs> 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 um. So the Temple of Lutheria, it's a, this small temple stands out from its surrounding due to its obvious wealth that has been lavished on it. And you can look inside and the temple's interior is dominated by dozens of statues of a grinning dark-eyed woman with a scythe. Casks and painted jugs of wine are stacked along the walls. And the temple is filled with a sweet fragrance. And as you just observe it casually... Um, you notice there's kind of about, uh, about eight or so uh, devotees of Lutherian here. But I'm assuming you're keeping your distance for now. Mm -hmm. What do you guys do? Well, I'm going to go inside and start walking around and just look around and see if she bought any doors. Or entrances out of exits out of the main area, especially since I'm presuming we all talked about the rumors we heard and the rumor about kids in the basement. Yeah. As you walk in, um, you are instantly recognized as you are getting a certain amount of fame. And even before you start, manage to poke around and perhaps locate a basement or something like that, 
The high priest, who's dressed much more extravagantly in the uh, symbols of Lutheria, says, Oh, hello. Rainy, is it not? What brings you to the temple of Lutheria? Thinking of oh. switching sides, perhaps? Well, not really, but um, I just wanted to see you know what it was like. I mean, I've met a lot and dealt a lot with a lot of the side on people. Not great, by the way. Uh, and I've talked to Lutheria once. Oh, but I you have haven't really. That is fantastic. News. Interacted with like her followers, and I, I just kind of wanted to get a vibe. I just wanted to do a vibe check, to be honest. Well, any questions Honestly. about Lutheria you have would be most delighted to answer. Well, do you mind if I just walk around and take a look and kind of feel the currents in this, uh, in this temple? Just before we do, I'll answer that question. Is everybody kind of coming into the temple? Anybody hanging outside? Um, yeah, I'll come inside. Taryn inside, Magdalena? Uh, sure. Xander? Is there anything going on right outside the temple? Anything? What? I'm th looking like if there's like a s another entrance, maybe secret entrance. Not secret, but like something that leading maybe downstairs in a basement. Okay, make an investigation check as we say you're looping around the outside looking for a secret yep. entrance in here. Okay, so make an investigation check. Oh. Don't notice anything. Rainy's okay. talking, Taryn's inside. Zagnus, is Zagnus back with us? He's not. He's not, okay. Uh, Billabog. Bull Bullbug, wait outside or go inside? Bullbug don't know what to do here, guys. And Taryn? Oh, Taryn, yeah, you, you're inside. You, you said that. Um, Whatever Zagnus does, you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, you, you want to look around? Oh, my goodness. I'm not sure who has it, but somebody has Oh, and what did you guys do with the Horn of Valmetria? We gave it back. Uh, yeah, it's at the... Alice because she asked me. I was I was under an oath of service to give it back. And she oh. took it before she sacrificed part of herself. So I won't offer you 5,000 gold pieces for it then. Rip. <laughs> But I completed my oath of service. <laughs> Not how, oh well, um, well, yes, you, you can have a look around, but we, we just have one simple request from you, uh, Rainy. Um, now a lot of people come to the Temple of Lutheria. We're like a, uh, shall we say a wholesaler of sorts for some of the wine of the city. Uh, we get visitors from the Siren's Roost. We get some from the Satyr's Table. We get some uh, noblemen. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, some of our wine casks have gone missing. Um, now, we believe there are bandits hiding out in the woods near the vineyards. And the vineyards are up here, not surprisingly. And quite frankly, this is doing a terrible disservice, not only to us, you understand, but to the residents of the city. The wine market has dried up considerably. And we're prepared to offer you, heroes of the Oracle, 2,000 gold pieces, if you can bring us these bandits alive, or 1,000 gold pieces dead. We'd be ever so grateful. So if you agree to do us for this small service for us, Rainy, <coughs> absolutely you can have a look around. You get to look around before? Like now? Mm, make your persuasion check, Rainy. Now, I, I assume that you are the heroes of the Oracle. Your word means something, does it not? Yeah. I just meant, you know, because we're already here, so if we could just take a look around. Of course, you know, bandits are bad for everything. 
So I have one question for Rainy. Was that a persuasion check or was that a deception check? Persuasion. persuasion. She's not great at lying, guys. She most of the time. I don't think she's quite figured out what lying is. Twisting words, yes, but lying outright. Okay, so you fully intend to investigate these casks then? Yeah, she does. I don't know about the rest of the group, but hey, well, she does. Well, that's it, right? Can we check out the area that they uh, were there any traces left by who yeah. took them or yeah we can check the cellar um you can check the cellar most we keep the wine here on the ground level though you're more than welcome to check up the cellar keep in mind that they oh. the person said the kids were in the basement not in the cellar but, uh, um uh, um well, I, I don't know I'm going to be the stupid one. What's the difference? Cellar is in the roof. Basement is in the ground. Oh, okay. Is that right? Or has Malcolm got a back? No. No, I, an attic is attic. in the it attic. Might be a, it's both. <laughs> a cellar is a basement. So cellar that's is a basement, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. I, thought, I thought maybe it was just like an American like, thing. Kind of basement. I think it's a New Zealand thing, so we don't really have either in New Zealand. Okay. Uh, they're more than happy to well, like, check I was the top like, floor, uh, well, but not was, the bottom floor. So it's a Malcolm. Well, I was saying because like a wine cellar is usually like underground. Yeah, oh, okay true. then. But no, yeah. I, I think Malcolm's the, the, the foolish one here. I, I, I got it confused, <laughs> oh, okay. so... No, that's fine. But God bless you for seeking clarification. That That's good. Most people would say, oh, maybe I'm the dumb one. Maybe I shouldn't seek clarification. But seeking clarification no, is always a good idea. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Okay, so, so... You want us to, like, investigate your missing casks, but don't want us to investigate no, where they've gone missing from. Oh, my goodness. You're just presuming she said no. He uh, just I'm, said no. I'm more than happy for you to, to conclude, uh, search the entire establishment. You can search anywhere along here, anywhere up in the attic. What about the wine cellar? Oh, as you see, we keep the wine on this level, and you do see barrels of wine uh, around the oh. outskirts of this temple. Why don't yep. we just take a look around? All right, we'll take a look around. Okay. Um, they are walking around with you. They're not letting you just wander around. Uh, but if you like, uh, you can make an investigation to see if you can find some sort of trapdoor or something like that. So everyone who's searching, I guess everyone who's inside the temple, make me an investigation check. Can I, um, instead of trying to look for clues, can I just try to observe any of the people with observe, observant? Ah, any, sure. any, like, if any one of note sticks out. Can you bring up the observant feet for me, please, just so I can yeah. have a, a read of it? And since we leveled up, my passive perception is 22 for what that's worth. Mm -hmm. Okay, good Ebus. to know. Yeah. yeah. Aaron's mm. oblivious as fuck. Mine's 11. Mine's 10. Bulldog is surprisingly 15 for passive. Nice. Well, what you notice, Magdalena, is you're more people observing than looking for, for, for traps and bits and pieces. Um... I'm going to say when Taryn starts searching in a particular area, you notice this head person who, if I didn't say his name, his name is Trellis. As in T R Trellis. Um, he's looking very nervous when Taryn gets to a certain area. And we can say mm -hmm. mechanically that uh, you pass that information on to Taryn. And Taryn, you focus your attention on this particular area. And you notice uh, uh, the the carpets that they have down in one particular bit, it's just a little bit off. And you kind of casually trace it around with your toe just to try and make it not obvious that you found it. But you think you found a, a trap door under a carpet in the corner of the room. Okay. And... Well, <laughs> Rainy's looking in the wrong place. And, uh... Would Mags have, like, noticed this in, like, what I'm doing? Yeah, that's how I... I think I said okay. Rainy when I was okay. explaining yeah. this. Yeah, I, I, point, I, would have, I pointed it out to you, basically. Okay, so, cool. Uh, so, bottom line, you know where the trapdoor is. Yeah. 
in that case, I'm gonna uh, try to distract uh, Trellis uh, and uh, try to give Mags like an opportunity to maybe kick the rug back and um, get in there. So quite kind of the the temple is quite small, and there are a total of eight people kind of watching. Oh, you. okay. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is we know it's there. We do. We might be able to come back at night or something. Right. Okay. Um. Um. Yeah. Rainy will see what's happening and see the indecision on Taryn's face and just point at her and whisper under her breath, using message, and just this was just a scouting mission, and we're just trying to get a lay of the land. We can cool. come back later. Then yeah, I'll just uh, keep looking around and pretend like I haven't noticed anything. So did you find any clues, says Trellis? Any leads? Uh, did I find anything by the wine barrels? Because she is interested in this bandit situation. Um, no. Or would you want me to make another one? Another no, uh, it's more like the absence of wine barrels, so there's nothing really to check out. It's not like they've been stolen. Uh... <laughs> I uh, just tuned out. Um, ah, sorry. Um, yeah, the barrels are not there. So, but you look for clues around there. Nothing obvious. Um, it's it, it mean, the, her problem was the wine. His problem was the wine class weren't delivered. Like whoever he gets his wine from is not holding up their end of the bargain. Yeah. The wine hasn't been delivered, and once again, he they offered two thousand gold pieces for the bandits alive, or one thousand gold pieces for them dead. No, no clues. That's that's unfortunate. I bet you well, have to look we around. Have, we'll check out the flyer. What was that, sir? Well, I guess we'll just have to go check out the supplier. Of of course, of course. And it's such a pleasure doing business with the heroes of the Oracle. I I know it's <laughs> even pointless, but. F before I even ask it, but would you consider throwing your allegiance behind the almighty Lord Sidon? Or Lutheran? Uh, yeah. I, I can't do that. Not, not right now. No, no, I just... Oh, you, you, you can't blame a person for asking. Well, I look forward to hearing your report back about uh, what you find. No. Bye! Yeah, Taryn will leave. Okay. So, outside of the temple now? What do you do? No, oh, Taryn Bullbug been waiting. Uh, Rainy's going to mo start moving a little ways away from the uh, temple. Maybe find a quiet place where they can talk without being waylaid. Sure. Do you walk like a, a four, five, six minutes away from the temple? Uh, of Lutheria, so yeah, absolutely. So, oh. did you find anything? It looked like you found something. Did you find anything? Yeah, I think we found where they're keeping. Well, we found a trap door. It's under the carpet. Right, right. Well, we should definitely come back uh, and check that out more. Uh, hopefully when there's less people around. Also, what do you guys think about just like Doing this wine job, you know, you know, money plus wine. And she stares at Bullbug. Dway, wine? There's wine? What happened inside? Is there wine inside? Bullbug go inside for wine. There's, no harm in getting money. There, there, there's no, there's no I wine. I have no problem with it. Yeah. No wine inside. Why is Rainy mean to Bullbug? She said wine and there's no wine. Well, no, no she's not. Find the wine. Yeah, she's not being mean. We need to find the wine for them. And then when we find it, you can have pretty fun. much take whatever. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Bullbug. Yeah, understand. It's, a, wine. It's, a, it's, it's what's called a finder's fee. Uh, Bullbug don't know about fees, but Bullbug know about wine. Well, when you're getting a finder's fee, it's a good thing. Okay. So this okay. is a good thing. Bullbug trust friends. Yeah. Cool. So, to the vineyards, I guess? Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Um, 
Where are the vineyards? <laughs> Rainy says that, not not me. I saw the map. Rainy says that. Ah, yes. Well, yeah. The, the, easy enough to find your way. Ask a simple question. You send to the vineyards. As you're heading along this pathway, passing close uh, to the Temple of the Five, which once again is, is pretty much under perpetual construction. I know um, at least thing was at least uh, rainy. I think Taryn helped as well. Mm -hmm. She did help, but still it, it's just, just missing something to bring the whole aesthetic together. Um, but as you're po po poaching, <laughs> approaching the Temple of the Five, uh, a young man uh, comes up and says, um, uh, uh, excuse me, um, my name is Taryn Neurodragon, and I, I was wondering if I, and he looks at Taryn, I wonder if I might ask you a favour, oh great and beautiful Taryn, who already the bards sing of your beauty, M might mm -hmm. I have a word? They do? Um, well, uh, <laughs> I mean... Too, too bashful, but uh, I'm, I'm quite the poet myself. I've written um, many great uh, works about the beauty of Queen Vellas. And uh, at the moment, I'm starting my trilogy of poems dedicated to your beauty, Taryn. And I'm not. Okay, yeah, we, we can go talk. What's up? Hey, what's up? <laughs> so, as I said, um, uh, I've, I've been watching you from afar, and I have uh, uh, just a, a simple favor to ask you. I mean, before you even ask, yes, I am Turo uh, Terran Neuro Dragon. I am a descendant of one of the original Dragon Lords, so the dra pub blood of the Dragon Lords pumps through my blades. And I'm, I'm not wanting for coin, so. Um, but the, the favor I want to ask you. I mean, at, don't take this personally, but your beauty is amazing. Uh, but I think it's safe to say that um, Valis is just on another level altogether. I hope I'm not too presumptuous in saying that, but, but would you agree, my, my beautiful Taryn? Absolutely. I know, I know. You're beautiful and amazing and truly... Not comparable. Uh, well, you're a feast to the eyes. and you're, you're right up there. Now... My question to you, my favor to ask you, I've been wanting an audience for Valis ever since I can remember. This is why I'm hanging outside the Temple of Five. Sometimes I get a glimpse of her and I, 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 I pledge, I sing about praises her beauty. But she just turns her nose up to me and over the, uh, the, the weeks and months, I, I finally managed to get her attention. And she said, if, if, I, if, if I want an audience with her, I have to bring her a specimen of absolute beauty and radiance. And you, Taryn, are it. So if you would accomplish me, accomp <laughs> accompany me to the great palace, I can get what I've always desired, an audience with Queen Valis. So... My beautiful Taryn, will you do me this favor? Uh, I'm really sorry, Craig. Sorry. That's that's rainy, rainy, rainy. Trying to see if this person's being truthful about all of it. Sure, make an inside check. <laughs> Didn't they step aside though? Oh dear, but this this is. Nope. I don't know. I mean, step aside, but it's very easy to undergo this, under hear this conversation. You don't, you don't know. It could be genuine. He could be full of shit. He could be, I don't know. You don't know. What do you say, uh, Taryn? I don't really have the power to grant audiences to Valis. Uh... No, no. The thing is, if I bring someone as beautiful as you to Taryn, uh, to, to Valis, she will grant me an audience with her. She said, I have to bring someone of great beauty. And if that great person of great beauty would accompany me to her, she will, like, uh, give me the time of day, shall we say. It 
going to take a moment. The palace is just over there, he says, pointing north. You know what? We share the same name. Why not? <laughs> oh, well. Um... Uh, you share the same name? I'm confused. You said that this person's name was Terran or something? The it's son the same name of Terran Nuradragon. Oh, he's okay. called Sala. My um, bad. We don't have the same name. And he's a descendant of Terran Nuradagon. Oh, sorry. Yes, my name, my name is, is Sala. I'm a descendant of Terran Nuradagon. Nuradagon. Got it. Okay. Would you, would you accompany me? You know what? Sure. <laughs> and may I take your arm? Absolutely. Where are you going? I'll be right back. Uh, I'm just going to take this guy to the palace. Uh, Should BRB. Bob come can with you she can fly. Back? Is this going to be a long thing? Uh, he said it'll take a minute. So, it do, shouldn't take long. Do you need Bullbug's protection? No, I'm good, Bullbug. Uh, but I really appreciate it. Okay, you'll have fun. Bullbug, wait. Thank you. I'll buy you some wine later. Oh, oh yay, wine. We're waiting for you he here? I'm confused. If you're just going, what are we doing? You can. I can meet you guys at the vineyards if uh, you guys don't want to wait right here. I'll, I'll, but it should be quick. She, she can, we can still keep going. She can fly her way back. Sure can. Okay. So the rest of you head to, oops, Temple of Five goes for a walk. Um, let me mark that down there. Uh, so you, you, the rest of you head off to the vineyards and we'll switch focus there in a second. But, uh, Mr. Uh, Sala, whoops. Who is has to be said is a is a handsome man in his own right, um, and he accompanies you, holds, uh, takes your arm, and both of you head up to the great palace. Um, um, tell me, I, I mean, I, I've heard of your exploit, exploits, Taryn, and the rest of your companions. I must say I'm mighty impressed. Um, I really appreciate it. It's really, it's just, uh, we've just been in the right place at the right time kind of thing. And modest. Mm. Modesty even adds to your beauty. You enter inside of the great palace. Um, and, um, uh, 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 Sala says, excuse me, I believe we have an, we are entitled to an audience with, uh, Queen Vallis. And the courtier, uh, looks annoyed, um, says, and, but then he looks to Taran. uh, is he bringing you to an audience with the Queen? Um, yeah. Well... It looks like you finally got your wish, Sala. And uh, they pick you up, and you're in the presence of Queen Vallis. Um, King Acestus is not there and says, She says, Oh, my! <laughs> this is uh, quite the turn up. You managed to convince someone to come with you, uh, uh, Sala. Well, congratulations, you have an audience with me. Um. I have to ask, though, Taryn, why did you bring this this person with you? Because he's writing wonderful poems about us. He, he's been doing that for a long time. Um, uh, and uh, Sulla says, "Well, I mean, I know, I, I, I know you're you're um, uh, uh, married to King Acestus. It's, it's it's no surprise that I." Um, that that the, the marriage is on the rocks and it's just for sham. Um, I don't necessarily ask to be be your husband, but can at least be your uh, your partner, 
uh, your friend, uh, your confident and everything that that entails. I'm gonna look at him like he's a complete buffoon. He drops to his knees and he brings out a huge diamond ring. <laughs> just a simple gold yeah, band with this massive diamond on it. And he says, Savellus, please, uh, I, marriage isn't the right word I'm looking for, but friends, confidence, partners, lovers. Did I say lovers? That's not part of it. I just need to be near you. I need to be close to you. Vallis takes a deep sigh and says, Vallis, um, your determination is welcomed. Um, your persistence is to be admired. But I'm afraid my answer must be no. And Sulla, for a moment, just looks oh, heartbroken. I've got him right in the feels. Just, okay, I, I understand. I, I, I knew it w w was a long shot with a, a goddess. But, uh, uh, Karen, will you marry me? And he offers you the ring. It's a mighty fine ring. I mean, at a rough estimate, it's worth at least a thousand gold pieces. How about, uh, after we defeat Sidon and things? A long term uh, engagement. Very long. So that's a yes? Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy. Now, just in case you're not telling the truth, Taryn, if you're not telling yep. the truth, then make me a deception check. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Um, Shit. I, I, I feel you're making fun of me, Taryn. Uh, okay. Well... I'm not making fun of you. I just, I think your ring is very beautiful. And I would like to have it. Um, he says, I, 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 I can't tell if you're serious or not, Taryn, but you just said yes in front of Queen Valis. You understand that, right? That holds some weight. Sure. Well, and he starts sweeping. Ah, oh, you've made me the, 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 the happiest man, man in the world. And he shuffles a the diamond ring onto your ring finger. Nice. Yeah, whenever, uh, you know, we can wrap all this other stuff up, you know, with the Oath of Peace ending soon and all that. Uh, I'll course. come back here. Of course, of course. Maybe a, a simple kiss before you go? Sure. Okay. So nice. There you go. Oh, he blushes. Oh, I'm, I'm going to have to go tell my father. Um, we'll start making the wedding preparations, and when this uh, whole war is over, we will wed. You have made me the happiest man in the world, Darren. Thank you so much. Or should I call gonna... you Miss New Dragon? Is that too soon? Not yet. Not yet. Too soon. Oh, too, too soon. Too soon. You're right. Oh, I'm oh, gonna oh. Uh, pat pat him on the head. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he, he excitedly goes around, and as you're leaving, he, he holds your hand. Do you let him hold your hand? Sure. Okay, I'm going to go make arrangements with Father. I, I know this might be a month. You said extend an engagement, but I'll start making preparations, my love. I am so excited. And he dashes off into the Noble District. And I'll fly off towards the uh, vineyard. So, you have a thousand gold piece uh, diamond ring. And yes, it could be used for a um, revivivice, revivivice spell, but you, you can't really cut the diamond in half, so it'd be a, a thousand gold piece cost, if you want to do it, if it has any sentimental value to you at all. Okay, so as you're flying over there, let's swing over to the vineyards of Mitros, where the rest of you are. So... Um, You can't 
come to a vast field of row upon row of grapevines. Uh, although there are no obvious signs of caretakers, the vines are thriving and the fruits hang heavy. The plant life surrounding the vineyard is healthy as well, but nowhere near as green as lush. And if any of you come from a farming <coughs> background, but even if you don't, it becomes obvious that this type of vineyard would require lots and lots of work. You expect to see people scurrying back and forth, you know, pruning the grapes, doing the weeding, but no such activity uh, are visible. But you follow, well, feel free to, if there's anything you wish to discuss about that, feel free to do so, otherwise I'll just push on. I mean, no, Rainy's just gonna keep an eye out for any people or movement. Okay. Following the road through the, the vineyards, you come to a wooden pass flanked by two large marble statu statues of leering nymphs. Passing between, uh, passing between the statues, you enter a foggy dell, carpeted by dead leaves and wild rose bushes. In the midst, you hear the sounds of musical laughter and revelry. It seems that you have uh, stumbled upon a glade of fake creatures. And they're just partying, living it up, uh, having a good time. Oh, uh, look, Thank they you. have wine. Bulldog wants wine. And even without approaching this gathering, you can see there's barrel upon barrel of wine. Uh, far more than <laughs> would be justified by such a party. You have to be they careful have... with Faye, them, Bulldog. They have wine. Bulldog wants wine. Rainy's just going to start approaching. Okay. So I say everybody except for Zagnus, who's done something Victor <laughs> something amazing, uh, joined you. Uh, perhaps he was waylaid and the sirens uh, rest for a bit too long, but he catches up to you. Um, uh, so, um, you see, as, as you approach, um, there's... As I said, far too many barrels of wine uh, that would be justified for such a thing. There's like 20 or so barrels of wine, which is a crazy amount. Um, and a, uh, a satyr playing a, a gentle tune of his lute. He puts down his lute. He says, oh, welcome, heroes of the Oracle. It's an absolute pleasure. Welcome, may I get you a glass of wine? Uh, a delectable treat, perhaps. You're about mm. to. Uh, what was that, sir? Well, we're actually here about the wine. Oh, okay. How did you come by all of this wine? Well, you see, we have an arrangement with merchants, shall we have, shall we say. Uh, many years ago, we, we've we worked this land, we've weaved our magic. You notice now that the the vineyard more or less takes care of themselves. That was our doing. We've done our, our rituals, our spells, and now the vineyard takes care of themselves. And we strunk a simple deal with the merchants of the city that they can take the wine, but every month they must return one of the barrels of wine to us. They have reneged on their deals. They have not, um, they've taken all the wine in the coming months. So as a retribution, we're holding on to these wine until they come to their senses. We had a deal. They reneged on the deal. Do you have a deal with specifically? Who was supposed to return or give you of well, two people, uh, Trellis and Septia, are the, are the two most uh, notable of uh, people who are reneged on their deals. Uh, but there are many merchants, um, but 
no merchants are honoring the deal. So we're keeping their wine until they come to their senses. So I feel like he's telling the truth. Make an insight check. Yeah, Xander and, and I did that too. Yeah, same thing. Oh. Trying to see if he's truthful. Xander, too many scantily clad nymphs, perhaps? Uh, Karen? <laughs> <laughs> um... Uh, uh, everybody except Xander, you you get the impression that he's telling the truth. I mean, it's not as serious as an oath, but he fe he feels he's been rightly justified. He's been rightly wronged, and um, he's doing it in his mind. He's doing everything right. If they don't want to do the fair deal with the wine, provide them with a, a cask and take everything. And he's more than within his rights to keep it. So he, he believes, at the very least, in what he's saying. I agree. That's super fair if, it, if they made an agreement and they're not yeah, giving I you mean, no one task. <laughs> I, I know, how right? Many, how many tasks do they owe you? Current. Um, you, you look around and there's, as I said, it would say about 20 a uh, 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 cask of one day. If we if we kept this and doubled it, about forty. I think after that we should be even. So they haven't paid you in forty months. Uh, <clears throat> I think there's I, multiple people on the cask. Yeah, multiple. Maybe it's mm. maybe it's not that quite much. But look. We, the, the fact is, they owe us wine, and they take all the wine for themselves, so we're making a stand here and now. Now, tell you what. I will make you a deal. If you, mm, shall we say, bring the merchants to the senses, I have this quite magnificent harp that I can offer you. Uh, can everybody please make me an insight check? Um, I meant to say history. Um, I don't know what I said, but I meant to say history. My bonus is the same. Mine's lower, so. Okay. Mine's higher, but a low roll low. Yeah, same. So, right. Do you want me to re-roll it? Uh, my bonus? No, that, that's fine. Okay, I'm just going to whisper something to a couple of you. Where's my story from? Let me just quickly refresh my page. That's weird. Okay, let's try that again. Ah, there we go. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Taryn and Rainy, um, you know one of your good friends is um, Kyra. You know Kyra is a very talented poet and a musician in her own right. And it's been weird. I got you on the wrong map. What, what is this is so weird oh wait i see what happens sorry let me reset this whole thing it took me into a different game that's part of the weirdness okay oh, i'll say um rainy uh rainy and taryn you remember your good friend um Kyra? you know Kyra is a very famous musician she's exceptionally good and you remember a while back you confronted a creature that stole 
one of her magical instruments. Um, you remember Kyra talking about all the types of musical instruments that she's ever been made for her. This is Kyra's harp. Yeah. So yes, bring me the, 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 the head of the merchants, bring them to the census, and I'll, I'll give you this harp. It is truly a remarkable piece of craftsmanship. Truly remarkable. So, and how did you get that harp? Oh, I was gifted to it by a wine merchant. In exchange for uh, more than his fair share of wine, shall we say. Was that the truth? Make an yeah, can I inside check that one? Oh, come on. Jesus Christ. That's kind of your jam, Magdalena, but you're not doing it. I good. know, this is terrible. <laughs> Anybody else? A Magdalena, Rainy? Passive of 17. Mm. <laughs> um, I'll say with your passive of 17 and Rainy with your 22. Um, that's not the full truth. I'll put it that way. It's not the full truth. Well, as you can see, it's a, it's a magical harp. And he plays a few tunes on it. And it does some magical abilities. And he... Um, I can't remember what the particular magical abilities of this one are. But he uh, casts some dancing lights from it. So not only is it magical, it's one of the finest musical instruments ever crafted. It is yours if you resolve the situation with the meal of the wine merchants. So by solve the situation, do you can we just like convince them to go back to the deal, or do you actually want them to? He's, this is a very very delicate subject. I mean, while we have no formal oath between them, um, so there's no, shall we say, divine retribution if they break the oath. They did make us promise. And promises are taken very seriously here. I think no one would blame you if you resolve the situation, shall we say, by cracking a few heads. Mm -hmm. So you're encouraging violence. I'm encouraging justice. Sold. All right. Who's got that? No. <laughs> you not recognize this instrument that he has? He's going to give it to Agnes us. doesn't. Give it to us? He took it from her. From no one. I struck up a deal with a wine merchant. Hmm. And then what? And what was the deal with the wine merchant? Wine, of course. I gave him more than his fair share. Caused a few political ripples, but nothing I couldn't handle. Now he has his wine, I have my harp. I've been enjoying it for a good month now. Believe me. So, uh, Zagnus, I believe your name was. You're more than happy to do this deed for us? For the harp? Cracking skulls for justice is what I do. Cracking skulls for justice. That's exactly the phrase I'm looking for. Cracking skulls for and justice. And the justice for the stolen uh, Kira's harp, our, our BFF friend who uh, sacrificed so much of her power to save the city. This is not That's Kira's harp. harp? No, yes. this is. Kira's no. harp. No, no, yeah, that's no. That's Kira's harp. Kira's harp. That's no. Kira's harp. It is. I, I trust Rainy and Terran more than this guy. Well, look, let's, let's assume this person you're referring to, Kyra, no doubt some common tramp. This is, um, mine oh, now. Common oh. tramp? Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Okay, I need to, give me, give me a second. Can you need me to I'll, crack a skull for justice? Uh, is he I, being well, mean to Bulbug's well, friends? Yes. Let's see what happens. What Can Bulbug hit him? How many people are with him? Yes. You're a free uh, man, brother. You can hit whoever you please. You, you ask if Bulbog mm -hmm. can hit him, and Rainy is like, please, please hit or, him. Uh, there is this guy, um, a satyr. Um, uh, three other satyrs. Uh, a dryad. So in total, there's... Are we still on the... Um, Meech? I'm still on the map. Yeah, yeah so point I'm three. I think oh, still on the map. Mitros. Yeah. You, Bullbug's oh, friend. Okay. Bullbug, charge! 
All right. Uh, okay, this is a... I don't have a map prepared for this. So give me just a couple of seconds. I'll throw something together. Uh, Great. Uh, Sorry, he said the wrong words. He called Kira a threat. No, I agree with your decision here. Yeah. I agree with your decision. No. Uh, I just think it's funny that he didn't have a map prepared, which means we're not supposed to do this. <laughs> oh, I love things that un people are not prepared to do. That's that's fantastic. Um, well, I had to roll to see if she would have restraint because of the headband of intellect. Before that, she would have just done it because that's her initial instinct. But she is wearing the headband of intellect. So I had to see basically an intelligence roll to see if she could restrain herself. <laughs> we could not. Manipulated poor bulldog with his minus two. <laughs> Manipulated? She just said yes. <laughs> Tell someone with minus two yes. That's a bad thing. Well, she knew exactly what she was doing. Why do I have this? Bulldog, do you still have my axe? No, uh, no Bulldog got his own axe back after the. Or, or he picked up an axe during the, uh, once you guys freed him and he gave the oath of service, Malk said Bulba got an axe. Okay. So you have your axe back and Bulba has his gladiator axe. I've still got it marked that you have my axe. I never <laughs> explicitly heard that it was given back. <laughs> it's good. I didn't need it for the game, so I didn't ask last week. <clears throat> Okay, so we'll put you guys over there. Walk back to the map. So I'm just talking to myself. You won't be able to actually see anything yet. Uh, in fact, why don't you enjoy the creative art of making up a map on the fly? Love it. No, Very nice. nice. Love it. I'm here for it. It looks like where we got centaurs. Ah, oh, just a little, little similar. <laughs> Here for uh, it. Tables of food. Oh, don't want another tent though. Is Bullbug carrying Zagnus? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Almost always. Charge, brother! Horns down! Where's the person we've been talking to? Because I feel like Rainy is standing right in front of whoever that that savior, wherever that savior. Is. Yeah, okay. once he made that comment, we probably would have kind of cornered him a little bit. I mean, in his defense, um, Ira is a pretty common name. Um, he's obviously said exactly the wrong Doesn't thing. Doesn't mean he has to be rude. Well, well, he was rude. So that, this is the guy who is talking. I'll put a little red dot on him so you can focus your anger there. Um, three satyrs. Come here, satyr, with your terrible art. Why don't you go on? Randy Terra need to move out of the way of Bulbug. He charging. I think one of the interesting <laughs> things about this module, since it's an, uh, an, an, not an official D&D product, the um, stat blocks for a satyr is more or less public domain, but the art for satyrs are not, which is why I think oh. they have red tokens like this. Sometimes mm. I just use the actual versions. Anyway, there are three of these. We'll say they're each lounging around in their own tent. And there was a dryad as well. Um, once again, terrible art, but the dryad is, is talking to one of these guys. And I think that is it. Let me just double check. Get out of your way when she has the chance, but she was talking directly to him, which was why I placed it right in front of you. Sure, yeah, well, feel free to re rearrange your characters where you fell would be appropriate and we'll just pick it up from there uh, 
while we're gearing up, Zenus is going to ask Rainy, uh, you've had disagreements with my methods in the past. Do these people die today? <laughs> well, for that, Trent, for that comment, go for it. <laughs> do, not, do not have it. Okay. Full bug charge. Move aside. Roll as as for initiative. Our life on the line. Oh my. All, all good. Roll for oh, initiative. So bad. So bad. I rolled it. Yay. Oh, oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to spend a sorcery point because initiatives are ability type. And I'm going to re roll that because I don't want to. I've rolled a one. Ah, oh, my necro died. I rolled a three! Even better. It's all good. It happened. Just using the shit out of my new ability, guys. It's fine. Okay. Well, hopefully this works now. My necro is working. There we go. Okay. Could I go voice. in front of that updater, though? I'll get there in a Stay second. I've got this button where I can select lots of NPCs at once and we'll all initiate at the same time. Which is very useful. Yeah. So let's have a look. Um, your question, Rainy, was between you and the Dryad. What's your dexterity? Uh, 14. Let's have a look at the Dryad's dexterity. It is... Oh, okay, so you can go in front of them. So we'll put Rainy right up there. See, hey, look at guys, my rolls did make a difference. My rolls did make a difference. Yeah. Okay, so the Slater sees what's going down. If nothing else, Bullbug has given the game away by going to charge and putting his horns down. This Slater, um, <laughs> uh, Okay, the satyr says, oh, we don't need violence. Why doesn't everybody just relax? Rainy, make me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, Rainy. Roll good at these guys. Ooh, that was a good roll. You feel sleepiness coming over you. It's such a peaceful place, all these beautiful creatures around you, and you feel yourself going to sleep. Then, vroom, you snap out of it. You do not fall under his, uh, whatever he was doing. It won't so, work on me. Oh my, that is impressive. And he retreats back over to there. Taryn! Taryn is going to look at the guy in the center in front of Rainy mm -hmm. and say uh or actually I'm not gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna use charm person but uh I'm basically just gonna say that none of this has to be this way that you can just give us the harp and everybody's fine I'll we'll be happy and we can even have drinks together okay um so, I just don't say about 15 for uh, wisdom save of 15. What are you casting? Charm person. What? Can you bring up the charm person spell for me, please? Attempt to charm a humanoid. I think phase are humanoids, aren't they? That, that, that fall, fall under that? Because he's technically a fae. Spader? I mean... Let's see. Uh... I think technically it should say under the stat block it would say humanoid or not. Like, Because even when it says it, goblin or something, it says goblin humanoid. So I think it would say under, under it. But I'm not positive. Yeah. The 
5e e rules define humanoids as a certain type, not a form. That's why I said, like, on the stat block. It said it. Uh, well, maybe it won't work. Um, I think it has advantage it. either way, because we're fighting I'll tell you what, it. They, they do have advantage <laughs> against saves and other magical effects. And you say it's wisdom? Yeah. So, oops, I'm going to roll at advantage anyway. And it rolls a 19 at advantage. So either way, unaffected by it. Maybe because of the Fey ancestry, maybe because it made its advantage. I says, no, no, my dear. We will resolve this one way or another. Anything else, Taryn? Uh, yeah, I'll say fine, and then I'll hunters mark him. Oh, okay, hunters marked. And then uh, I will fly... 25 feet up in the air. It's a 25 feet up in the air. Uh, I hate it when characters use the DM's tricks against them. Okay, up in the air, 25 feet. Fantastic. <laughs> Is that your turn? Yeah. Okay. And he says, look, really, really, this this didn't need to come to this, Rainy. Why now we did it? This. He takes a disengage action, retreats back into his tent, and as a bonus action, he throws this flask of water right at your feet, Rainy. And a huge water mm -hmm. elemental emerges. It erupts out of the ground and gets ready to smash you. Um, this satyr is going to do the similar thing. Oh, this is all too distressful. Why don't you take a simple nap, my lady? Rainy, wisdom saving throw, please. Not great at these guys. Nineteen. That's pretty good last time. Oh! Oh my goodness. Yeah, but look at look at my bonus. Oh, I know, <laughs> just roll the well. Um. <laughs> my bonus yeah, that's, is. <laughs> that's fantastic. So you resist the gentle lullaby that the satyr sings <clears throat> to you to try and put you to sleep. <clears throat> you shake it off. Ooh. Magdalena. I'm not tired. <laughs> and I um. Can I walk up to him and try to grab the the instrument from him? Um, you can certainly try. Okay, here's, I shall try. Here's, um, I'm gonna put you that there's a risk of breaking it. I'm gonna say if you lose by five or more, the harp is gonna break to you as you try and struggle between it. Do you still wish to attempt? <laughs> I'll, I'll look to the group. Do, do we think this is a good idea? <laughs> um. So in case well. you didn't hear it, if Magdalena fails the opposed check by five or more, the half will break. Do we know if breaking it would cause it to lose its magical essence? Because Rainy has used mending and has used it in front of you guys before. Um if that influences your decision. Um, so yeah. with that information, Magdalena, I'm going to say you're still not sure because mending is used to repair like rips and clothes and so on. This is a, a magical item, so there might be some complications here. Brainy has it's mended stuff before. All right, I'll try. Fuck it. Okay, I'm going to tell you what I roll first, and then we'll go from there. He rolls a 14. Okay. Uh, athletics? Or acrobatics. Or, uh, uh, they're both the same. Oh, let's go! So, <laughs> Boreas is holding it gently and he just throws this water elemental which erupts and you take the opportunity just, yoink! You now have a Boreas harp. He says, no, no, give that back! Alrighty. Give it back! Uh, Kira will, um, thank you for this, and then I shall bonus action faced up. Oh, what a move! Yeah. Yeah. This way. Delana, yes. Five. Just in case Love this it. turns into a hot potato situation, we'll put a little blue dot it's on uh, Magdalena saying that she has the harp. Wow, Magdalena, what a move! Took the risk, Go. natural 20, just bounced away. Beautiful. <clears throat> Zach is just fist bumps when she appears. <laughs> yeah. Perfect, perfect. 
You stop being mean to Bullbug's friends! And if I measure this out right, I can charge in a line this way. So he is going to attempt to... Uh, charge and hit him with a uh, gore attack. Well, there's a big and old he's going to go reckless. There's a big old water elemental in the way, and you can't just walk through a water elemental. Okay, so he's going to stop the water elemental. Okay, so charging towards the water <laughs> elemental. Okay. Yep, reckless. Just because it's fun, let's pretend this is a sound that Bullbag makes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, what's me mean to Bullbag's friends? <laughs> okay, Bullbag, make an attack. 20, so... Um... You charge headlong in the water, man, water elemental, and you win reckless, so that absolutely yes. uh, uh, hits. And that's reckless as per the barbarian, right? You'll have advantage against you. You, you think that attacks you, right? Yeah, per uh, Bullbug had that on his normal sheet. He's a fighter, you said, but he has reckless. Yes. Yeah, reckless is fine. So reckless as per the yep. barbarian. Okay, so <laughs> okay, that hits. Roll damage. Okay. So this and is your, uh, your gore attack, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, gore, yep. Yeah. And because he moved ten feet in a straight line, he also gets this extra two d eight. Cool. And then creature must succeed a DC. Um, it says fourteen, but I hit we hit level five, so I don't know if you want to say fourteen or DC fifteen, your choice. Uh, but I need a strength save. Okay, hey, well, first thing to note, our horns aren't the best use to attack a water elemental. So it's not going to take full damage from that, because it's resistant to non-magical piercing damage. So it's going to take 8 from that one and 6 from the other one. And because you did that attack, I'm going to give an advantage on its strength saving throw, because you didn't quite make contact as best you could. And it rolls a 17, so even if it's 15 or 16, it maintains its feet. As you kind of splish in water, it erupts everywhere. Nice. Stop being mean to Bullbug's friends. Is that your turn? That's it. Okay. This satyr sees um, what's happening and it says, No, no, gentle bull. Take a sleep in the pastures, please. And start singing a tune, a nice, beautiful lullaby to you, Bullbug. Make a wisdom saving throw, please. Eleven. Um, yes, yeah, that's a great idea, Bullbug. Why all the anger? You fall down and you go to sleep. Bullbug, take nap now. Now. <laughs> down he goes the water elemental um uh, creatures you go so let me just check this okay so the watermelon the, the watermelon the water oh, elemental is that watermelon <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'll just walk over to this table here and grab some watermelon. Watermelon! <laughs> the water elemental takes a massive watery fist and slams it down onto Bullbug. Advantage for numerous reasons, and it rolls a natural 20. Whoop, whoop, whoop. You take 22 Ouch. points of damage, Bullbug. Um, that immediately wakes you from your slumber, as a punch to the face normally does. But you're still prone on the ground, but you're not asleep. Um, and it's going to punch you again right in the face. Boosh, just emotionless. And at advantage, it rolls a 25. So that's a further 17 points of damage. Oh, my. So it's 22 and 17, Bullbug. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, that's his turn. Rainy. Uh, Rainy is going to bonus action cast... Uh, Shadow Blade, third level. Yep. And action, just swing out with this uh, shadowy blade and try to and try to slice the water elemental. Is that a magical attack? I guess it is, isn't it? Must be. Yep. Okay, yeah. Well, 
uh, yeah, Shadow Blade creates a um, basically a magical weapon. So it's technically a weapon attack, but I'll just it's with it's a just things is resistant to certain attacks uh, from non magical. So so you can do normal damage. Well, it does psychic Blade. damage. So it does psychic. Damage, oh, okay. Regardless. So. Okay. Cool. Okay. There's yeah. Numerous reasons why this will do full damage. Um, only if you hit though you get your shadow blade and, sh and just as the water as pummeling bulbug you just time it wrong and miss uh and then she is going to uh move this way which i'm presuming provokes an opportunity attack yep so as you swing with the shadow blade you leave yourself open the the water elemental takes a swing at you Roll was a 13. What is that, Miss Ray? Miss! Miss because of Mage Armor. Mage Armor, beautiful. Um, I haven't really been used this in the past, but I'm kind of using it a lot more now. Would everybody mind updating the description in Roll20 to match something like what Taryn says? That lists your armor class and your passive perception? That'll just save me. You, are, asking. you want it just with presuming that I have Mage Armor on? Yes. Because we can presume that you cast major armor at the start of each day. So just after a long rest, just make sure you tick off that spell slot. But it's um, ticked yeah. off. Okay. Beautiful. Um, so Rainy, uh, assuming a 13 misses anyway, but if you could update that little stat there, that would be great. Yeah. Okay, so um, get the Shadow Blade out, misses, tries to take a swipe at your back. No good. The Dryad. What can a Dryad do that's fun? Um, the Dryad goes on down on its haunches and says to Bulbug, Oh, I'm so sorry you got hurt. Stand to your feet, friend. We'll fight this together. Like a wisdom saving throw, Bullbug. <laughs> I am concentrating if you want to mark that. Cool. Concentrating. Shadow Blade is a concentration. Oh, our Shadow Blade is concentration. Thank you. Yeah, Bullbug. Let's try it, man. What are all these assholes beating up your friends for? Um. Uh, Come on. Come on, friend. I got you. We'll protect you. Let's start taking out these nasty people. Go get him, champ. Bullbug. Your, your allegiances have changed. The water elemental, the satyrs, Boreas himself. They're all trusted friends. Who are these assholes? And the dry... Bullbug! I'm your true friend, Bullbug. Take out these brutes for me. You're still prone on the ground. Xander, what do you do? Um, Xander will cast. How far away is who's carrying the loot? Ah, uh, Max, the blue dot person. Magdalena. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna try to help Magdalena, so I'm gonna walk towards. Um. Tap on the shoulder and cast invisibility on Mags. Ooh, nice. So, boom. You can technically resist yeah. that if you want, Magdalena, but if you want to be invisible, then you're invisible. Um, <clears throat> I'm probably going to break it on my turn, but I will use it to move. Okay, you are invisible. So no attacks of opportunity when you're invisible. I appreciate it. Xander's boom, Magdalena vanishes out of existence, as does the harp. And then, as a bonus action, can I try to use telekinetics to push water elemental a bit? I mean, yeah, so... you can certainly try. All right. So, is it spell attack? Uh, actually, let me double check feature. It is DC. It is DC. Yeah. 
Strength save. So the, against the water elemental, strength save. Ooh, it rolls a six. So how far do you move it? You move it ten feet? Five wow. feet. Five feet to the north? Like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. Yeah, opening up the, I assume, making Boreas a lot more easier to hit. Yep. Okay, fantastic. And just so we get this right, this dryad is linked to Billabug by a green dot. Those two things go together. Zagnus, your turn. Zagnus is going to uh, clutch his uh, great axe, white knuckle tight, and just uh, mutter under his breath, um, unhand his mind, tree witch. And uh, 40 feet there is going to run around back of the tent. Second one does that you connect with her tree like form. And okay. So Eleven's nice. flashing. Okay, nice. And then he is going to fall down on one knee as a bonus action, and he's going to whisper Pythor for Bullbug as a noble servant of you as a mighty Minotaur. Please help free his mind from this beast. And a spectral appearance of Pythor's uh, axe is going to appear above the dryad and oh, smash oh, oh. downwards at it. Nice. Let me get you an X. Uh, that was sick. That was sick. Didn't work though. It's still cool. <laughs> you should oh, still There's have to make a... one concentration check. Uh, if it was a concentration based spell, yes. Um, so you, you can move that X wherever you like, Zagnus. But yes, the X. I'd say it's like uh, it's hovering above the dryad. Okay. Um. This later is a creature within sixty feet. Um, she sings a gentle melody to you, Zagnus. We don't need violence here. We need to rest and recuperate. This is a celebration time. Zagnus, make me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, yeah, this is, this is this is all too much for you, Zagnus. Maybe it's time to turn around and you leave. Maybe it's time to lie down and take a nap. And the satyr kind of scoots around behind the tent. Taryn. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna fly. Sheesh. I'm still up in the air, so I can fly over him. Um, yep. Hold on, let me count how far that was. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, I will... I can only go down uh, 10 feet from there, because that'll use the rest of it. So. So or your... is it 30 flying speed and 30 walking speed? I don't know how no. that works. One okay, I didn't guess. One I didn't think so. Okay. Um. Then yeah, I'm still 15 feet in the air. Yep. Yeah. So uh, shoot. Um. And I will. I'll uh. I'll just the only thing I can do. I'll just word of radiance at this dryad. Okay. Is that an attack or how does that work? It's a con saving throw of 15. Con saving throw of 15 has magic resistance and it rolls a 19 with this advantage Rip. on a thing so no no good okay that's it for me then cool okay uh Boris Boris is oh this is just going delightfully well um Everybody, except Bulbug, make me a wisdom saving throw. Even me? Because I'm, I'm asleep? Oh, no. Uh, no, sorry. Yep, not, not. If you're a Minotaur, don't roll. Everybody else. 
Taryn, you're <laughs> fine. Xander, you are not. Rain, that sucks. You are not. So only Taryn succeeds. Um, he starts playing his beautiful music. It is so melodic. Rainy. Yeah. Um, Zagnus has got the right. What's he idea. playing it with? With uh, he has his own harp. He has his own harp. Oh. It's not it's not the magical one, but he has his own harp. And uh, Taryn, check Bob's harp. <laughs> uh, everybody except Taryn was asleep. <clears throat> so my concentration drops then, right? Damn, if only Taryn had a really loud voice to wake people up with. Oh wait, uh, uh, look, I don't know that it does that. But, uh, oh, this. I also can't use that, so I'm already used it today. So, Mags, you're um, not invisible anymore. Is Hold on, right? I have immunity to magical sleep. I'll roll again then. Yeah. Uh, if you have immunity, then you don't even need to roll. Yeah. Well, I have advantage against being put to sleep. I don't have immunity. Okay, roll, roll, roll again, Rainy. You, you do. You do. Roll again. <clears throat> That's yeah. not that's ah, okay, so still asleep. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah, elves don't have to. Elves are immune to that. Uh, does, does sleep break concentration? I think it would. Does... I don't know. I, I don't think I can concentrate while I'm sleeping. Is broken by being incapacitated or yes. failing a concentration check. Yep. I don't know. Yeah, I just isn't sleep incapacitated? It, it is. It is. So the invisibility does indeed drop. Yep. But at least Magdalena is uh, is awake. That's that's good. Yeah. Gotta kick us awake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the satyr um, looks up at Rainy and says, "Why don't you come down here?" He's gonna fire his short bow up at, up at you. And rolls a I'm, dirty twenty. I'm I'm asleep. I'm Aaron. This person here, the flying person. Sorry. And it does hit you with a short bow, with a with a, a 20, so it hits your armor class exactly and does six points of piercing damage to your Rainy. Ah, Taryn, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Magdalena, you are awake. Many of your companions are not. What do you do? All right, so I'm, I'm visible though, correct? You are. Okay. Um... I would like to dispel the charm on Bulbug. Okay. Um, 